Hey folks, it's me, Joey B, and I'm here today with Sprite. So I have not done a great job of explaining what this monstrosity is right here, and that's what we're here to do today. As mentioned, this is Sprite. It is an EDF powered or electric ducted fan powered hopper slash lander vehicle. Um, we've got the vehicle mounted upside down on the load cell from that test stand that we built. The load cell is being driven by this primary computer, the secondary computer is what's actually going to fly. They're nearly identical, a little bit of circuitry difference. Uh, the vehicle is controlled uh, yaw pitch roll with thrust vanes. These are 3D printed right now, but they'll be CNC cut out of um, aluminum or maybe graphite um, as things go forward because we're also going to be tossing a bunch of butane out the back so that we can get a nice flame as this thing is uh, moving through the air. I've got all this set up today because I'm trying to test out the batteries and see their performance over longer flight periods. Sprite is built to test guidance, navigation, and control at longer time scales. So those Aerotech motors that burn for like 20 seconds, those are awesome. Um, but an Atlas V booster takes like several minutes to put a Centaur where it needs to be. So if I have any hope of uh, scaling up to larger rockets that are more complex, I think Sprite is a really safe way for me to uh, get repeatability, fast turnaround times, and a lot of flexibility on a test platform where I can have much longer flight times. It's pretty close to a UAV or a drone. It's not really a rocket, but hope you don't mind. This is all in service of rocketry in the long term. A little tour of the vehicle here. We've got our avionics power battery. We're missing the flight batteries, which straddle um, the craft right here. One on the left, one on the right. Um, here we have the ESC, or electronic speed controller, that drives the primary EDF, or it's, it's really the only EDF. Um, we have these really beautiful BLS1004 servos, um, super high precision digital servos um, to control the thrust vanes. These servos could be geared down to get higher precision, but they're already really like high precision as it is. They are nice digital servos. Um, they're very powerful. They have a lot of... Uh, basically control authority already. These thrust vanes, I think I mentioned, they're 3D printed right now, but they will be CNC cut. Um, we're basically just running them uh, straight through the fan to see how this performs. This is an incredibly rough and obviously not securely mounted, uh, sort of a low pressure zone generator for this afterburner. I'm not a propulsion engineer by any means, um, but that basically allows, to have a, allows us to have a stable combustion zone to get that butane lit uh, to start shooting flame out the back. It's worth noting this as many times as I possibly can. I am not a propulsion engineer. The goal is not to have any appreciable thrust increase or the, like thrust benefits from dumping all of this butane out the back as this thing flies, other than having a small amount of changing mass. So it is kind of like a rocket. We're losing mass. We have to change what our nominal thrust is to hover as the vehicle flies. And part of it is just like, I want fire coming out the bottom of this thing. So butane, when you burn it, makes fire. That's it. It's still pretty hard to tell uh, what's going on here since the craft is upside down, but this is a LiDAR sensor looking at the ground. Specifically, it is a LiDAR Light V3 from Garmin. It's good to about 40 meters up, um, and that's gonna help us with really high precision hovering when we're close to the ground. And then for the rest of inertial navigation and just navigation in general, we're using the vector nav. VN300 sensor. So it's an AHRS, IMU, uh, dual GPS, and really high precision. I will probably talk more about them later, but I want to give a huge thanks to VectorNav for sending me this IMU specifically for this project. Um, they're a partial sponsor of this project, so thank you very much to VectorNav. This project wouldn't be possible without such a high precision IMU, and uh, I do actually have a second IMU on board, but that's a backup. So the VN300 is the primary basically like the heart of the guidance system for this craft. This right here is the primary flight computer. We built this on a live stream a while back. This is actually a different version, um, but we have a BNO 055 as our backup IMU uh, by Bosch. We also have the BMP 280 sensor as our uh, one of our barometers on board. The TNC 3.6 is powering everything here. And then just coming down a little bit, this is an almost identical computer, so it's a little easier to see. We have outputs for uh, pyro channels. We have two different serial ports, uh, I2C breakout, SPI breakout. All the analog pins are broken out. 
um, and a bunch of other things as well. So then we've got our servo outputs down here. The G pins are um, GOG or uh, gear on ground sensors. So those are gonna be tiny little micro switches that I uh, will end up attaching to the legs here to detect whether the craft has landed or not and whether all four feet are on the ground. Now we're still missing a bunch of stuff from the craft. The whole top half is essentially missing right now and it looks identical. I've actually, I put a small clip on Twitter of this, uh, but I'll, I'll just overlay it right now. The craft has four sort of spars that point upward as well. Those are going to be holding the dual GPS uh, separated by about a half meter, hopefully a little bit more. Um, the dual GPS, they also have four more LEDs for just state indication. And then finally, um, an XB uh, radio unit so that I can communicate with the craft, get telemetry downlink as it's flying, um, and send it commands. So if we need to abort to the landing site, if we need to abort to whatever's directly under the craft, if we need to control other things, commanding ignition, stuff like that, uh, all of that can be done remotely so that the craft isn't, well, I mean, it should be fully autonomous, but you want some control there. The whole thing, not including the test stand, is about three and a half kilograms in mass. Um, the fan is technically capable of up to 60 newtons of force or six kilograms. Um, but I think that's also under dynamic load, or rather when the fan is moving. So uh, just through testing, it looks like we can pretty reliably get about uh, four kilograms of thrust, and we really should only need about three and a half for most of the hovering operations. Anyway, that's all for right now. I figured I'd put out a little video describing what Sprite is, since there's quite a bit going on, and I haven't made any videos on that yet. Um, there will be more soon. It's moving pretty fast as a project. I'm hoping to have a first little hop in December. Um, and then a lot of the complexity is really going to come when uh, we start with that software development. So using full uh, state feedback control for this. So no more standard PID stuff moving into much more advanced guidance navigation. And then I think down the road, a little while longer, um, I'd like to start using uh, more complex guidance algorithms, but that's going to require more powerful computing power on board, and then eventually, um, I think ideally like some camera stuff on there too. So, so Sprite is sort of built as a copy, a very tiny version of Mastin's Zombie Lander, um, or Zoe, I mean, they have a bunch of different vehicles. Armadillo Aerospace, it's a bunch of uh, strange looking rocket type devices as well. Um, and so this is sort of my little version of that, where I'm trying to figure out how do we guide a vehicle over longer periods, how do we do landing site selection in real time on the craft? Um, there's a lot of ambition here and uh, there's a lot that I need to still figure out, but that's kind of where Sprite is at right now. And uh, hopefully I'll have more for you soon. Thanks for watching. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.